I'm going to be able to provide you guys as far as information. There is a ton of information in this head of mine, but eventually, I there is. I think I've spoken about this at least once before. There is a Stargate, and the character's name was Orin, and Orin was from parallel universe but also from the future and they had these technologies and he was more advanced than the people of the Stargate system and he and his people were visited by Colonel O'Neill and Samantha Carter and you know Dr. Um, Jackson and Tilk I'm a Stargate person and Oren came back because he was kind of demoted. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm speaking of the wrong group. Oren had ascended. And Oren had violated one of the rules. Wasn't supposed to provide any help. And so they sent them back as punishment. And they sent them back as a child. And he was going to lose all of his memories. All of his memories of ascending and the future and all that wonderful stuff. And as he's on the wonderful earth, he's sitting up there trying to explain how to get out of a crisis. But the more he explains, the more information he loses. And he's not able to give them all the details to the very end. And that was the premise of that particular show. Well, I'm not talking about a feeling. I got this feeling <clears throat> no sorry ain't no James Brown going on around here it is just the facts that I feel it decreasing I know it's decreasing it is decreasing so those of you who are smarter than me and there's quite a few of you out there who are smarter than me because I read your comments and the emails and so those of you who are smarter than me this is for you You need to start your own channels, do your own videos, because, man, these people need your knowledge, your brilliance, since you're more brilliant, more smart, you know, they need it from you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, somebody sent me this. Now, this not, this is not one of those individuals. He's not one of you. This is a different individual, although he did something wrong. He sent this to my Eon V3 email when I specifically said do not do that. Sorry. <laughs> Whew, man. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is... I haven't read it. I just went over the beginning. This is about the Mississippi Department of Health. Okay, probably, more than likely, it's an abortion thing. And this is the Jackson Women's Health Organization. Jackson, Mississippi. This is a writ of certiorari to the Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit. Now, the Fifth Circuit... Oh, man, so many people be relying on that circuit court for something, and I don't understand it. But notice this about, like I said, pro-life, pro-life foundation. They decided to do an amicus brief to come into the case to speak on behalf or in support of the petitioners. Now, I want you to pay attention to what this intelligent idiot, Alan E. Parker, and his group from his foundation the Justice Foundation, had to say, because this is important, that you hear what these idiots said. Judaism, Judaism? Yeah, this is a religion. Judaism, anything that deals with the word ism, deals with beliefs. Baptism, Buddhism, or Buddhism. <laughs> Catholicism. Terrorism, okay, all deals with beliefs. Judaism is the original pro-life religion, really. Do you know that Judaism, being a Jew, that wasn't a religion? No, go on back. Go on back. Go read the Torah. You'll see that there was no religion known as no Judaism. They were known simply as Hebrews. It was a way of life. For a family. This was generations. 
It started with Abraham. Okay? It was not a religion. Well, they adopted people into their family, didn't they? You better believe they did. It only became religion when the members of that family decided to apostatize. Apostatize? I ain't never heard of no apostatizing. Well, that's when somebody is part of something, and then they separate. And then they start talking about the thing they were part of and start vilifying it. You know, like uh, many of you who are part of the human race who all want to claim that there isn't a God anymore or want to claim that the universe created everything. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Or those of you know who claim that there is no um, round spherical earth. Oh, it's a flat earth. Because the King James version of the Bible had put something in there, which was one of the greatest apostasies aside from the second century apostasy since he changed 600 verses of the Bible. And But that's okay with you. See, that's called apostasy. So apostasism. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me do this for you. I'm going to put the word Syrian. Syrian? Yes. Um, I don't want to do Assyrian, like the Assyrian nation. Do you understand? You, you following me? No, I can't do Syrian that way. So what we have to do, give me a second. I got to show you something. Let me show you something. All right, this is going to be kind of quick because y'all not going to see the ints betwinst. That's right. I said ints betwinst. My own word. Now, follow me now says, in time, he heard that the sons of Laban, Laban, who the, is Laban? Don't worry about it. We're saying, Jacob has taken everything that belongs to our father. And from what belongs to our father, he has amassed all of this wealth. Laban was Rachel's brother. He was a relative of Abraham. Now, what nationality was Laban and his family? Hold on now. Got to get you this. Now, this is important. Laban, he was the grandson of Nahor. Who was Nahor? Well, let's find out, shall we? Let's click right here. It says Genesis 24, 24. But I'm going to go to Genesis 31, 53, because we need to get this. Let the God of Abraham, the God of Nahor, and the God of their father judge between us. Jacob swore to one whom his father Isaac fears. Ladies and gentlemen, Nahor was Abraham's brother. Uh-oh, are you sure? Hold on now, hold on. Hold on, we gonna get there. I'm sorry, I was wrong. Nahor was Abraham's grand father see tear uh, great grandfather well grandfather because tira was abraham's father sorry tira died he died but from shem then sirug then nahor you understand right after the flood so gotta find out who abraham was what nationality he was why because the jews were family they were the descendants of abraham there are quite a few people out there who are claiming to be descendants of Abraham because they think somehow that's going to make them somebody. Hold on, there's a reason for this. I'm going to get to it in just a second. So hold on now. Now when y'all get a chance, y'all go check this out. Laban, a relative of Abraham, the brother of Rebekah, the father of of Leah and Rachel, and I said he was Rachel's, I apologize, ladies and gentlemen, y'all just don't understand, I really am tired, I've already made two mistakes, so I'm correcting them now, so y'all can hear me, I know that he wasn't Rachel's brother, I knew he was Rebecca's brother, because that's when Isaac went to go get a wife, Laban was the one doing all the speaking, he resided in the city of Haran, a Padanaram, Aram, in the area of Mesopotamia. Greece. 
Laban is called the son of Bethuel, the Syrian, literally meaning Aramanian. He is referred to as Laban, the Syrian. Don't believe me? Let's go here. Okay? Bethuel, Aram, blah, blah, blah. And then we got one more. Hold on. That's the... Uh-oh. Did I mess up? I messed up. I got to go back. Got to go back. Just got to go back. <laughs> got to go back. And we're going to go here to 31. This is where we were earlier, where I was supposed to take you, but I couldn't take you there. And Jacob out with it, Laban, the Aramanian. Okay? Which is another term for the Syrian. How do we know? One more time. One more time. I should have just went to 24. We're going to go to 25 first, then we're going to go to 24. <laughs> Aramanian. Okay? Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, see, the daughter of Bethuel. So Rebekah and Laban were Bethuel's children, the Aramean, the Pandanarian, the Pandanarim, okay? Now, see, east as far as Assyria. Do you understand? They were Syrians. So Abraham was a Syrian descent. He was not of Ethiopia nor was any of his offspring of Ethiopia. He was a Syrian. Just that simple. Okay? Just so that you guys get it. So those of you who claim that you're descendants of Abraham and that the original quote-unquote Hebrews were black because you saw some hieroglyphics, you are wrong. Now, I don't mean the bus bubbles or anything like that. I just mean for people to be accurate. So when we get this idiot right here in this case, coming into the case with this presumption, this is an attorney speaking. This is not somebody who knows the facts. He's speaking off of what is, quote unquote, generalism. Do not go by generalism, people. Go by the facts. Do your research. Do your research. Okay, it's, we, I have these people who call themselves Hebrew Israelites. Okay, first, a Hebrew is an Israelite. An Israelite is a Hebrew. Hebrews were the people. It was Abraham. Go and look. No other people were called Hebrews. Abraham the Hebrew is what the Bible originally said. Hold on. I just closed it. Dang it. <laughs> And I'm, I'm not going to be covering this because I was going to do this video covering something else to show you guys about your arbitrations. And so I'm just going to just set the matter straight on who the real Hebrews were. Because everybody wants to think blacks were the original Hebrews. I just put Abraham the Hebrew, okay? That particular phrase is important because we're going to find it first in Genesis when he meets this individual named Melchizedek. After that, a man who had escaped came and told Abraham the Hebrew. First time you see the phrase in Scripture. Abraham was called the Hebrew. He's the beginning. There is none before him. There are only those after him. All of his descendants. You can find this. It's real simple. Genesis 14, 13. Just that simple. So, for those of you who want to call yourselves and think that you want to be Hebrew, you can be whatever you want. Can't nobody stop you from calling yourself whatever you want. But if you want to think the original Hebrews were black, Abraham was not black. There is nothing in anybody's history to say that Syrians were ever black. Arameans, not black. I didn't say Armenians, I said Arameans. They were not black. The Hebrews, because you see the hieroglyphics on the pyramids, that's because several Ethiopian kings invaded Egypt and became feral. And they changed the hieroglyphics. It's not my fault. Do your research, people. 
All right, we're going to go ahead and end this video because, again, I'm not trying to offend anyone. I just, so many people are relying on the fact that, quote unquote, black people were the original Hebrews. Ladies and gentlemen, black people were not the original Hebrews. If they were the original Hebrews, what difference would that make? The God that was the God of Abraham, he was not partial. He was not a respecter of men or the color of skin. He did not create race. Men created race. Men created black, they created white, they created green, they created brown. They created race. So stop thinking that the true God is a racist, prejudiced, redneck. I don't know why people would think that. Oh, I'm sorry, black neck, because according to these people, God is black. Excuse me, why would God be a color? Well, the Bible says that he has hair and wool. That's a vision. That is not a reality. Go back and reread Daniel. Go back and reread Revelation where it talks about hair of wool. One of them refers to Jesus. The other one refers to the true God, the Ancient of Days. The one who sits down on his seat to judge. People are not reading the scriptures for what they say. They're reading into the scriptures what they may. Go ahead. You can quote me on that. People are not reading into the scriptures what they say. They're reading into the scriptures what they may. What they think. What they want it to say. People. Many of you don't care about the Bible. You think the Bible is man-made. You think the Bible is written by man. By all means, hold on to that. Don't let go of it. You're absolutely right. Could you imagine if God actually wrote the Bible? Then who could make a copy of it? Then who could touch it? Who could read it? Lord have mercy. Do you understand? If he had actually wrote it, there could be no other copies. <laughs> Nobody could copy it. <laughs> I don't think you people understand the level of technicalities that you place upon things when you claim, well, man wrote the Bible. Of course man did. But they did it under inspiration. Well, there, you know, there are missing books. Sorry, the God that I serve, he's got the kind of power that if he wanted something in it, he would make sure it's in there. And if he wanted something not to be in there, he would make sure it's not in there. So if there's anything missing, oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, we got one more thing. Got, got to talk about one more person, okay? Because y'all got to, I've been hearing about this book. Woo-wee! E-N-O-C-H. Enoch! Oh, I put a C in. Nope, we need a E in. Enoch! Do y'all remember Enoch? Hold on, let's go to Enoch. Woo-wee! Y'all gotta, gotta really love this Enoch character. Because Enoch is so powerful. After Cain had sexual relations with his wife, she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. And he engaged in building cities in a city named after his son, Enoch. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. This Enoch right here, this is who the Freemasons worship. Then they, one of his grandsons to Balkane. Okay, but want to let you know, here is, and they want to talk about the book of Enoch. Ladies and gentlemen, Enoch, if he wrote a book, See, Tubal Cain, this is who the Masons worship. So if you're reading the book of Enoch, Enoch was the son of Cain. Well, she had a wife. Who was his wife? It was his sister, you more I mean, excuse me, persons. This was his sister. There were no other people on the earth. If there were other people on the earth, they could not have been man and woman because the Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Then he says, let us make man in our image. And then it says he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and uh, man became a living soul. Didn't say the men became a living soul. It said the man. So if there were other people on the earth, that means the whole Bible is a lie from beginning to end. Because if there is one lie, all of it is a lie. So stop it. Scriptures in Genesis, the fifth chapter, one through five says Adam had other sons and daughters.
daughters. It wasn't just Cain and Abel. The only ones mentioned at the beginning is Cain and Abel. Those weren't the only two. Well, how do you know that? Because your mama told me. Where did Lamech get his wives with an S from? No, 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 no. This is before the fifth chapter. Fifth chapter says right here. And this is the history of Adam. Everything else before that is an outline. History starts in chapter 5. Verse number 5 says, All the days of Adam were 930 years and he died. And then verse number 4 says, He had and he became father to sons and daughters. Okay? So during the 800 years, he became father to other sons and daughters. So Cain's wife was his sister. Lord have mercy. Well, anyway, the book of Enoch, in order for the book of Enoch to be valid, in order for people to have a copy of the book of Enoch, I want y'all to follow me. In order for them to have a copy of the book of Enoch, I want y'all to follow me. In order for them to have a copy of the book of Enoch, I want y'all to follow me. After that, Jehovah said to Noah, go into the ark, you and all your household, because you are the ones that I found righteous before me among this generation. And you must take with you the book of Enoch and every kind of clean animal by sevens. Yeah, because the book of Enoch would have had to have been brought into the ark or it that book being made out of whatever parchment it was made out of would not have survived the flood. So how in the world could there be a book of Enoch to have survived the flood? Be the very first book written? Of course they would preserve that, but where is that documentation? The book of Enoch is nothing but the creation of idiots who want to claim it's authentic, <laughs> and it is not. Okay, there's nothing nowhere in here that you find that Enoch, oh, by the way, there are two Enochs, by the way. Take a look. This is the first Enoch, Cain, the Enoch that the Masons worship, and here's the book of Enoch that everybody else worship. Okay, the Enoch who was the father of Methuselah, again, before the flood. If this Enoch wrote a book, the Enoch that God took his life because these wicked men were getting ready to kill this Enoch so God took him and he was no more if he wrote a book then of course Noah would have had to preserve it alive and Moses would have had to speak about that book of Enoch and Jesus most certainly would have spoken about the book of Enoch no such book exists as part of the Bible canon so please, people, stop thinking that there's a book of Enoch. Do your research. Understand that if there was a book of Enoch, Enoch's book would have had to have survived the flood. It would have had to have survived the flood. What was it made out of brick? That was a pretty thick book then. What was it made out of stone? What was it made out of plastic? That would have been a unique book at that time. Oh, no, it was on a CD-ROM? Well, how's it going to survive underwater? Oh, waterproof CD-ROM. Well, that's an interesting book. So, ladies and gentlemen, for those people who think there is a book of Enoch, please stop. You're hurting, you're hurting yourself. You're making yourself look very intelligent. Now, as far as Judaism being the first pro-life religion, what its first religion in human history to sanction human life from conception to natural death to the prohibiting of human sacrifice ladies and gentlemen the so-called religion of judaism did not prohibit these things jehovah prohibited those things go ahead take a look it was jehovah who commanded they not do those things they didn't say we're not going to do this he said you better not do it the prohibition of abortion in judaism has one narrow exception to save the life of the mother in extreme rare circumstances. Ladies and gentlemen, there is nowhere in scripture where they could save the life of the mother by discarding the fetus, discarding the infant. 
There is nowhere in scripture. I'll give you two. Rachel. Rachel died in childbirth. And then you have Eli's daughter-in-law. Eli the priest, the judge of Israel, the one who was just before Samuel as the high priest. Eli's daughter-in-law died while giving birth to her son. Hophni, I believe, was her father the son's father there was no saving of her life in exchange for the newborn this idiot says that in extreme rare circumstances there is nowhere in scripture that that says that but anybody who reads this who don't know what the scriptures say will believe that this is the case because they do presumption you have to rebut their junk this exception is reflected in every pro-life law and should not be used to justify unlimited legal abortion. <laughs> it is a presumption, ladies and gentlemen. So when I saw, I haven't even read this thing. I just saw that junk right there and that was offensive because that's what man does. Man sits up there and they know that you people don't know the law. So when man realizes that y'all don't know the law, and they do realize y'all don't know the law. When man realizes that y'all don't know the law, then they'll tell y'all anything. And guess what y'all gonna do? Y'all gonna believe it. When these religious leaders realize y'all don't know the law, when they realize y'all don't know scripture, they'll tell you anything. So let me tell it to you like this. I've heard all kinds of things about Jehovah's Witnesses. Our Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in the Bible. Our Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in God. Our Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in Jesus. Our Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe that they're going to blah, blah, blah. Our Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in taking blood. Our Jehovah's Witnesses will let their children die. I've heard all kind of junk. But never have I heard any of that from a Jehovah's Witness. I am one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And I know for a fact that none of that junk was true. But guess what I can't do? I can't rebut a lie. Why would I want to rebut a lie? That doesn't make any sense. If somebody says, you know what? Your mama's a crackhead. What am I supposed to do? You know my mother who was not a Jehovah's Witness? You know what she would tell us if somebody said, then let them talk about me. They don't know me. Let them say whatever they want to about me. But don't you dare sit up there and get into some fight because somebody done said something about me that don't know me. Ladies and gentlemen, I like that because that is the principle by which Jehovah's Witnesses operate. We don't rebut every presumption that somebody makes. We don't get into those little baseless arguments. Why? Why would you want to argue something that you already know is not true? That's a, that's a dead-end conversation. It doesn't lead nowhere. But why are you having this conversation with us now? Because you know what? Some people out there need to see how they're being manipulated by words, by statements. Look, I got people believing just because somebody said something or they show them something. Now, look, I'm going to go ahead and cancel and end this video because the one that I was doing initially and combining the two, I'm going to separate them. So the next video is for you arbitrationists. Those of you who have been doing the arbitration, those of you who've had faith in the arbitration, I'm gonna give you the legal support. Wait, as a matter of fact, you already saw it. You saw part of it. I'm gonna create a document that's gonna have all of this case law explaining that, first, while silence generally is insufficient to constitute acceptance, where the relationship between the parties justify an expectation of a reply, however, silence in response, hold on, to the offer may constitute acceptance. Each one of these cases here that I'm going to put in this document will validate that. I want you to pay attention, watch the next video. See, that's what I do. If I'm going to talk about something, I'm going to provide you proof. Why? Because I don't believe in anything without proof. Yes, I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses, not because somebody brainwashed me. Lord have mercy. But that's what, yo, you Jehovah's Witnesses be brainwashing people. Let me, let me explain something real quick, because we're still on that subject. 
ladies and gentlemen, the whole entire Bible is a brainwashing tool. Now, you heard me. Because it's that way by design. Why? Because there's a character creature out there trying to interfere with the healthful teachings of the Bible. So the Bible is repetitive. We read it over and over and over and over again until that stuff is in our minds and it's second nature. That's called washing our brains clean of all the filth and junk that's in this world. Because if we don't do that, then the world fills our minds with all kind of junk. Go ahead. Go ahead. Look at how many commercials you see that doesn't involve sex, violence. Go ahead. How many commercials that have nothing to do with sex has images of sex in it? Now, you know the Bible speaks of immorality and, you know, sex without marriage and how certain images are, you know, you know the Bible, everything the Bible speaks against. Well, we're constantly being bombarded with everything contrary to what the Bible says don't do and what the Bible says to do. Somebody's always putting out information contrary to what the scriptures say. So the Bible, sorry, some of you don't want to hear this, but it is the truth, is a brainwashing tool. It is designed to keep people on the straight and narrow. Now, everybody else want to do their own thing because, you know, go with your heart. Excuse me? Go with your heart. Look, my heart ain't in the best shape, so I don't want to go with my heart. But y'all want to run with your hearts? Go with your hearts and see. Look at the distress, the regret, the depression you find yourself in by going with your own thinking, going with your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, there was an RV. It was abandoned. The person, it had been abandoned for a while, at least a year. And people have been going over to it and stripping parts from it. I could see that RV every single day because it was a half a mile away from my property. And it was the the second closest thing to my property. There's another property in between that, and it's also abandoned. And I'm okay with the abandoned properties because like I said, my nearest neighbor is a mile away in every direction. So like I said, I'm okay with the abandoned properties because I like the fact that ain't nobody around. I could yell, scream, holler, and I ain't got to worry about bothering nobody. Well, on Sunday, some gentlemen went over to that van and they, that RV, and they were stripping it bare, taking whatever they want and taking their time doing it. They had come by once, and then they came by again to get mow. Had the little pickup truck, and then they had another car with them, and another car stopped by, looked at them, was speaking to them. And then by 4 o'clock in the afternoon, they'd been doing this for several hours that day. By 4 o'clock in the afternoon, they drove by. I have a window that I can look right out of right now. Clear shot at the RV. And they set it on fire. Now the problem is I didn't see them set it on fire. I saw them driving away with it already on fire. See, it's too far away for me to see them setting it on fire. But it is 100%. They were there just prior to it being on fire. And after it was on fire, they looked over and they kept going. And these were the very individuals whom I just saw at that vehicle prior to the smoke and the fire. Now, we have a fire hazard in California. You can't set no fires. There are some heavy penalties for setting fires. Arson, in a time like this, with this type of heat, y'all see these fires in California? We ain't got no trees around here, but we got grass. Grass is not tall, but it's there. So they could be looking at some substantial time. The only problem is I'm the only person who could see them. So there could only be one witness. The only problem, and this is the truth, I don't have no license plate. I don't have no, no, that's him right there. I couldn't see no faces. All I saw was a vehicle. And I didn't get no license plate because I wasn't thinking to get a license plate. When I saw it was on fire, I knew nobody was there. I knew it was abandoned. So in my mind, I said, I don't have to rush anything because nobody got hurt. There was a car that came by and he says, well, uh, dial 911. I said, if I dial 911, it will take the fire department almost an hour to get here. The fire department is less than 10 miles away. It will take the fire department an hour to get here. It took them 45 minutes to get here. 45 minutes. They're 10 miles away. Why? They're at the station. This is not, this is not a volunteer fire department. This is Cal Fire. It's not a volunteer fire department. They have their own vehicles and everything. Three fire trucks for this area. 
and it took them 45 minutes to get here. What I'm trying to tell you is when people go with what's in their heart, they do stupid things like that. Because they don't care about it. When you go with what's in your heart, you don't care about what's in somebody else's heart. You don't care about what's in that other person's heart. You don't care about what's in the collective's heart. You only care about you. That's why we live in such a selfish world. That's why people don't help people anymore. That's why people don't go out of their way to extend kindness to another person. See, that's why I am the oddball out. Why? Because, really? And I don't have to, you're not going to charge me anything? People are telling me that all the time. Of course, I'm not going to charge you anything. How much are the documents, on you? how much is it to uh, uh, register for your website? What you mean, nothing? Why, why would you, but everybody else, you, okay, thank you. Okay. I just gave people information on a video yesterday showing how somebody was doing the hour style money order before me. I told you that the hour style money orders were not illegal. Now, I call them the hour style money order because it was my style. Our style. So it was my style. I created that when I created the Legal Redress Commission. It was based on the hour style money orders that I found at the Legal Redress Commission. I told you I took those money orders and I put them in court cases. And I dared them, and I am not joking, I dared them to sit up there and charge me for it. I sent five money orders to the United States Treasury Department by certified mail with my address, my everything, all of my information, social security number, everything, which is why I can't get nothing done. <laughs> anyway, Daring them to do something, that's what happened. That's what led, I told people that they were going to come after me. That's why when I went to Puerto Rico, I knew they were going to come my way. So what did I do? The very first thing I did when we entered into the courtroom is I said, here, I need to file this into the record. Well, what's that? Well, what does it look like? Well, it says money order. Well, then that's what it is. Okay, the court notes it and files it into the record. Two million dollars. If it was illegal, that was a federal district magistrate judge. His name was uh, Mark Lopez. Mark Lopez is an idiot. To this day, he's out of Puerto Rico. Go ahead and look it up. December 20, well, it was the 27th with the arrest, but the 28th was that hearing. And then there were several other money orders placed in that courtroom, including one for $480 trillion. Just so that I could disprove the idiots out there who was saying, well, you can't do that. People are often saying, you can't do that. Well, if you're going to tell me I can't do something, you better show me some proof. If the banks get to do it, and I am a banking institution according to the law, if the banks get to do it, you better believe I get to do it. So, ladies and gentlemen, I need you all to understand something. I'm not always right. As you saw, I said that Nahor was Abraham's brother. Sorry. It was his grandfather. Okay. I said that Laban was Re uh, Rachel's brother when she was Rebecca's brother. Well, that was an honest, no, it was an honest mistake, but it was a mistake, and you saw how I corrected it, because I will correct myself, and if somebody says, hey, you know, you were wrong when you said this, hey, by all means, I will correct it, and I will tell people that this was brought to my attention, I was, excuse me, I, I was, in, in, sorry, can't even say the words, because it doesn't happen that often, y'all, okay, so, with the information you were just given, like I said, there are a lot of people who want to be on this color and race tip. Yes, I am a man of color, but I am not going to sit up here and think that my skin color makes me better than you. Nor am I going to allow you to have your skin color making you think you're better than me. Okay? The scriptures do tell us that why not allow the other person to be better than me? I don't mind you being better than me, but I'm not going to have you make me feel less of myself because you think you're better than me. Okay, this is not a competition, people. I'm not trying to prove I'm smarter than you, better than you, or... <laughs> more, more, more! Okay? 
I'm not trying to prove anything to you. But so many people want to prove something to me. They want to prove to me that they're smart. I'm sorry. Now, I say I'm a genius. But when I say I'm a genius, you know that I am not doing that other than the fact that I'm actually realizing, man, that was brilliant. That idea right there, man, how did I think of that? That's why you hear me say I'm a genius. But I'm not saying I'm a genius because I'm stuck on myself. Okay? That I cannot learn. Because I guarantee you, I'm learning something every day. I can't even get nothing done because I keep picking up on more information. And this stuff is overwhelming because it's hurting. The same as people who say they, when they talk to me, their brain hurts. Well, that's what's happening now with the information that I'm gathering. All of it is legal. All of it is involving the courts. So, for those of you who've been paying attention... For those of you who understand about arbitration, I promise you the next video, you need to pay attention to. For those of you who've been understanding the law, you should be paying attention to the last 20 videos. Why? Because they're all with a better understanding of what is law, what these courts are actually doing, and proof. Okay? And you know, just pay attention to the next video. This is 41 minutes of me talking to y'all. Y'all, go ahead and have a good day. Gotta go, okay? Adios.